What's up guys, welcome to the Royal Hangover for episode six of the Royals. As you can see, we have got true royalty. I'm a little nervous. Uh, King Cyrus himself, Jake, Jake Maskell is here. Um, the last, uh, in one of the last episodes, you had a member of the press uh, arrested. Mm -hmm. So I'm a little anxious. I mean, I know you play a character, but I I'm still like a little bit nervous. I'll treat you nicely, okay? Just Please on this do. one occasion, just because I'm jet, jet lagged. <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you. Uh, start tweeting us your comments with the hashtag the Royal Hangover. Later we'll show Jake three of your tweets and uh, he'll pick the one that he wants to answer. Are you ready? Do you feel good about that? No, I'm, I'm happy, yeah, right. bring it on. Yeah, if you guys are watching don't uh, on the West Coast, check back in about three hours. You're gonna want to avoid spoilers, but don't forget to come back. We, we promise that we'll be here. Um, it's great to finally have you here so we can meet you and learn a little bit more about Cyrus. Uh, in this episode, we really start to believe that Cyrus is starting to fall for Violet. What is it about Violet that he likes? He's shown really no love for anyone up to now. Well, I don't think he's got much love for himself. That or it's, it's the complete opposite. He's only in love with himself. Mm -hmm. But I think he's confronted with mortality, you know, now he's been diagnosed with cancer, he's lost a testicle, and suddenly Violet comes into his life, and she is everything that he isn't. She's innocence, you know, she, she, she's, she's pure, she's naive, she's, you know, not got a bad bone in her body. And because he knows that the clock is ticking, he, and, he, and he's, he, he's weakened mm -hmm. by the cancer. Um, there's a chink in his armor, and he allows her into his life, and she's probably one of the first people that's actually been nice to him. Because um, he does, he keeps trying to rebuff her, saying, what on earth do you see in me, you know? And she just, I don't know, just, she's light, and whereas he's she's dark. She's unrelenting in her, in her niceness <laughs> towards him. Yeah. We've got a, we've got a little clip of uh, Violet and the new lovey-dovey Cyrus. Let's take a look about this. We'll talk about it a little more. If you truly don't have much time left, do something meaningful with it. What do you really want to do? This is it. I want to spend it with you. Aww. <laughs> uh, in the end of this episode, Cyrus picks up that, that uh, beautiful ring. I don't know what, what that ring is. is. Is he thinking of proposing to Violet? And if he is, isn't that a little fast? Well, he hasn't got much time left on this earth, perhaps. Mm -hmm. you know, he doesn't know, know how long he's got. And so, you know, he's not going to think things through. He's just going to go straight for the jugular, decide, you know, it's what he wants. And he's completely fallen in love with Violet. Um, and, but obviously there are other things ticking away in his brain. Um, other storylines which bleed into it. Mm -hmm. But it is an engagement ring. It is. But that's all I'm gonna tell you. Oh man, he's gonna be, he's, is he gonna be getting down on one knee and, and popping the question? Well, Does he, a king do that? I don't know how a king proposes. I'm not sure I know how a king <laughs> proposes, but you're gonna have to watch. I mean, I definitely will be. I, you know, when you play Cyrus, um, there's so many fantastic little touches that I'm sure that you add that aren't in the script, but when you, you know, when you approach playing him, do you play him specifically thinking like, I gotta make him a, a, like a little bit bad or a little bit evil, or do you try and play it as straight as possible and let the audience decide if they see him that way? Totally. I, I mean, I you know, I want to treat the audience with with intelligence and respect, and actually, f for me, I've got to be honest and it's got to be truthful with Cyrus. You know, otherwise he's two dimensional. I don't want him just to, oh well, that's a bad moment. You know, actually, I think the contrast makes it much more interesting and much more 3D if I play against these things. And with Cyrus, I mean, the beauty is, is that now we're season two, the writers, when they're writing, they have my voice, Cyrus, you mm -hmm. know, in their heads. And so I, I guess it flows out. And this season, weirdly, um, learning the lines was so much easier. And I think it's because the character is in the writer's heads and they know what I'm 
gonna sort of be doing with it. Well, you do have a lot of like very fun, sort of flowerly, flowerly, flowery, <laughs> di <laughs> flowery dialogue. Um, do you, you know, what is your approach to that? Is it ever like, you know, do, are you like anxious for more, or do you get to a point where you get the script and you're like, oh my god, come on, man, this is so occasionally, fun. yeah, occasionally I get there and um, it'd be like, seriously, I'm filming back to back to back to back. Um, for 12 hours, then I go home and got to learn all the lines for the next day. Mm -hmm. But as I said, this season, the lines have gone in so much quicker. And I think, well, I know that I, I inhabit Cyrus. He's just there now. He's, he's part of me, uh -huh. I guess. And so, no, it, 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 it's, it's not so hard. And it's such a pleasure to be playing him that no, I'm mean, like, bring it on, more, 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 you know, the storylines. And I've had, I've got great storylines this season. Yeah. I've, I'm very spoiled. Um, and so thank you, Mark. Um, and all the writers, thank you. Um, and I think it makes him an interesting character, you know, to, to, to sort of go on this roller coaster. And yeah. this season is much more about his heart. Um, you see a human side mm -hmm. to Cyrus. Whereas last season it was all calculated manipulation um, a cold-hearted and greed uh, self-love and and his his armor was up he didn't let anyone yeah. uh, in one of those great storylines that you you know you mentioned you get to play uh, happened I believe in last week's episode it was uh, Cyrus driving his car through Simon's monument <laughs> his glass monument yeah. um, what was it like shooting that? Did you get to did you get to drive the Bentley around? Did you take it for a few laps around the city? I uh, yeah, well, of course I did. <laughs> I'll be right back, guys. I'm just uh, yeah. You know. See ya. <laughs> Let's go pick up coffee for everybody. It's for everyone. <laughs> Unfortunately, um, they had promised that the stunt driver had basically came up with a solution that I would be in the passenger uh, in the driver's seat. Mm -hmm. He would be tucked down in the passenger seat with. A rigged steering wheel mm -hmm. and just uh, a little monitor to see out where we're driving. Um, and so he, he thought it'd be great for me and we'd crash through and then I'd stumble out the car with my bottle and... But the insurance people said no. <laughs> <laughs> so it was good of a, a before and after. So, Those yeah. Those pesky insurance so, people. You, you know exactly what Jackie Chan goes through on every, <laughs> I don't know. Um, earlier this season, uh, uh, Cyrus talked to Simon's ghost, or yes. he's being haunted by Simon's ghost, or it's some sort of, you know, mental machination, um, where, you know, si where Cyrus accused Simon of not looking out for him enough when they were younger. Does that sort of explain why, explain Cyrus's behavior a little bit and why he resents his brother so much? Oh, completely. Um, I mean, that's the interesting thing, how it was written, because it's an infigment of his imagination. It's him projecting uh, how he sees Simon. So it wasn't the actual Simon, it was, it was Cyrus's version of mm -hmm. Simon. So, so actually, um, Vincent, who plays Simon, he, he, had, he had fun because he got to be a nasty Simon, mm -hmm. and he was quite nasty. Yeah. But th th definitely, Cyrus, you know, he, w he is the spare heir, was the spare heir. He always lived in the, sh you know, in the shadow of Simon, who was going to be king, you know, firstborn and everything. So Cyrus has had to deal with that, and he didn't get any love from his mother. Um, and obviously Simon, his brother, didn't look out for him at all. Um, so yeah, it's a, that's a huge part of Cyrus's makeup. You know, that's what has driven him to be how how he is because he's had to he's had to sort of you know make himself stand out and give him you know and the only way he's known is self-preservation and it's it's being arrogant and wicked and yeah. also he's very privileged he yeah. you know he's grown up with a silver spoon in his mouth and that's all he knows and and I guess, yeah, he started for a young age manipulating and it worked for him. What about uh, Simon's children, Liam and Eleanor? Does Cyrus feel threatened by them or does he just think that they're like kind of annoying kids? Yeah, I think he thinks that they're annoying kids, basically. He hasn't got much time for them. At, but saying that, um, there are seeds being planted at the moment where he, he does have a re relationship with Liam. Mm -hmm. He 
he sort of mentors him a little bit. And, you know, it, I think it was in season one where he turned around and he said, actually, we're quite like you and I. Mm -hmm. You know, you like, you like womanizing, womanizing, womanizing. Mm -hmm. We like, you do, like drinking, you like partying, you like excess, you know. And actually, Liam had to go, sugar, we are quite similar. And I don't know, it's fractious, their relationship. Yeah. But there's definitely, he, in season two, he definitely listens to Cyrus and uh, advice that Cyrus gives him. And he gives him really good sound advice. Mm -hmm. And actually, we, we filmed a beautiful scene, um, which I think is episode maybe six. A se no, it is. It's the one, um, actually, it's seven, I think. That's okay. the one. It's brilliant, though. Yeah. Yeah, because the, the, their relationship it seems a little bit antagonistic up until at least, uh, you know, episode six. In episode, I think it was, uh, the, there's a scene where Liam and, uh, and like Liam goes to confront Cyrus about you know not wanting to unveil the monument. That's a fairly contentious. So it'll be interesting to see how that relationship turns. But um, Eleanor is involved in one of the other really big moments in in tonight's episode. Here's uh, Jasper blowing the diamond heist because he really loves Eleanor. <laughs> no, before you have me arrested, you asked me why I was really here. Well, this is why. I came, we came here to rob you. Andy, is this true? Just let me the hell out of here. Jasper! Yes. Oh boy. How do they repair that? Poor Lenny. She Poor just has Lenny. her heart broken. <laughs> Too I many know. Times. Got her, yeah. you know, ex boyfriend trying to steal her diamond, her current girlfriend trying to steal a diamond. Having slept with her mom. It's too it's much. It's a lot. It's OMG. a lot. Uh, you guys have been tweeting us comments for Jake with the hashtag The Royal Hangover. We picked three of our favorites, so let's show them to Jake, and then he'll pick the one that he wants to respond to. Are you ready? Cool. All yeah. right, here's the first tweet. If you could play any other role on the show, who would you switch with and why? That's from Gabby, thank you for that. What's the hardest part about playing Cyrus from Emanuela? And finally, if you could cast any celebrity on the Royals, who would it be? Uh, that's from Jess. Which one do you think you want to answer? Well, the third one, that's, that's the most fun one. The third of the, the yeah, celebrity the one? Yeah, the celebrity. What, before we get to that, uh, well, let's get it up since, since we're here. So who would you cast? Well, I've got a few people that I would cast. Who's the first one? Um, well, on the plane out here, I just watched a film called The Gift, and it had Jason Bateman in. Mm -hmm. And I just think he's a brilliant actor. And I think he would get the roles. You know, he does comedy really. Mm -hmm. You know, he plays it straight. He's brilliant. Yeah. So I'd definitely get Jason Bateman. Um, and Chris Pratt would be really pretty good. <laughs> you couldn't go wrong with that. You couldn't go wrong with those two dudes. Fairly solid choices, nicely yeah. done. Uh, before we go, guys, let's show you an exclusive peek at next week's episode of The Royals. Last time we saw Jeffrey, he accused Ted of murdering Simon. But next week, he emerges as a dangerous new enemy for Helena. This dude is not fooling around. Let's take a look at this. Death is too easy for her. What I have in mind is so much more appropriate. She will live in a constant hell of grief and regret, poverty, shame, and fear. People will spit in her face when she walks down the street instead of waving and bowing and handing her flowers. They wanted a legacy. We'll give them one, the one they earned. Oh, dude, just when you, that's the fantastic thing about the show, is just when you think that everybody, sort of, the characters have sort of a rein on what's happening, in comes somebody to sort of turn it up on its head. Yeah, that's, that's the whole premise of the show. It just keeps, you know, unfolding and unfolding and yeah. peeling away layers and layers and layers and plot lines, plot lines thicken and thicken and, you know. It's fantastic, man. Dude, thank you for coming by. Keep up the good work, the, the deliciously evil work. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you, man. Pleasure. Come back anytime. Thank Guys, you. keep the conversation going on social. Follow the Royals on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Join us every Sunday night right after a new episode of the Royals premieres on the network. Next week, we're pulling out all the stops. Jake will be here along with Alexander Park, series creator Mark Schwann. You guys are going to want to see that next week at 11 p.m. on the network. Or get to your computer, maybe grab your mobile phone and check out the simulcast right here on E! Online. 
whatever it is. It's going to be a lot of fun, so don't miss it. Until then, guys, have a good week, everybody. Thank you guys so much.